Planescape Torment was a cult classic. Released in 1999, it was widely praised for its excellent storytelling, atmosphere and how the player could cleverly shape the narrative. I was a little bit late to this party, playing it 13 years after its release, but it didn't take long for me to fall in love with everything about it. Naturally, when I heard the sequel Tides of Numenera was being funded through a Kickstarter campaign, I was a tad excited and I clearly wasn't the only one. Fans threw $1 million at this project in 7 hours, making it the fastest Kickstarter project to ever reach that milestone. So was this money well spent? Does Tides of Numenera live up to its predecessor? Am I a happy gamer? So many questions. Before we get into things, I'll start by saying, if you can't read, you're fucked. This is text-based storytelling, and there are words coming out of words. Lengthy descriptions, lots of dialogue, loads of choices. Fortunately, it is incredibly well written. Every word had me completely engaged, and I loved every step of my journey. But I'm just saying, if you don't like to read, be warned. You will not like this game. So, what are all these words about? You are the last cast off, a discarded vessel of a mysterious man known as the Changing God. You see, the Changing God is basically immortal, as he has the unique ability to leave his physical body and be reborn into a new one. So what happens to the old body, you ask? Well, they just kind of wake up, not knowing much about anything. This is you, the most recent body that the Changing God has discarded. What you soon find out, however, is that there exists a giant, monstrous being called the Sorrow that sole purpose is to hunt down and destroy all cast-offs in existence. Kind of a sucky way to wake up if you ask me. Your journey is basically a quest for answers. There is so much you don't know and so many questions that need answering. The journey to answer these questions is the strongest part of Tides of Numenera. The people you meet, the situations you will find yourself in, the discoveries that you make and the choices that are presented to you. Words can't describe this experience. Uh, actually, words are exactly what describes this experience. And lots of them. Lots of very well written, meaningful words. So, the last cast off. You can choose what kind of character he will be and these different choices allow for different ways to play the game. I decided to focus on intelligence and learn some skills that would help me talk my way through tough situations. One particular skill that was very interesting was the ability to read minds. With this skill, I was able to read the thoughts of just about every character I encountered. They may say and act a certain way, but I could see what they were really thinking and this added a lot of depth to every single encounter. Damn, imagine if I had that ability in real life. I would know that you're thinking about liking this video. The supporting characters are also well developed, just as I had expected. By talking to them regularly and completing their quests, more and more will be revealed about their past lives and current motivations. One character, Eritus for instance, just seemed way too over the top and completely irrational in every single way. Kinda like me after a few brewskis. That was until I decided to go out of my way and learn more about him, which made for a very interesting string of events. Forging your own path through decision making is what Tides of Numenera is all about. There is a choice around every corner, most with significant consequences. In one situation, a bunch of kids begged me to leave a poor creature called a Stitches alone. I had no problem with that, I'm not usually a cold-blooded murderer, until I was required to kill it to progress through a different quest. You can deal with just about every encounter in multiple ways and these decisions go far beyond do the right thing or be an ass and do the wrong thing. There is rarely just black and white, there are about 50 shades of grey, with a little less sex. I lost count of the amount of times I threw my hands up in the air thinking what do I do? Few games manage to achieve this on such a large and consistent scale. Many of your choices in conversation or actions in battle come down to a skill check of one of three core stat groups, might, speed or intelligence. Here's an example. In this situation, I chose to try and quickly pull aside an NPC scarf, but to do so, I would have to pass a skill check that requires a speed stat. I could spend a few points of speed for a lower chance of success, or more of that stat for a higher chance of success. In this case, the 75% chance that I had was a success, and I proceeded to rip that scarf right off that neck, which then provided me with some very valuable information. The great thing about Numenera, however, is that if the stat check had failed, which is often the case, that doesn't necessarily mean failure or quest over, it just means the quest will probably be completed a different way. Managing your limited stat pools in this risk reward system is a key element of Numenera and is a huge reason as to why the story works so well. 
Occasionally, between all the reading and exploring you'll be doing, you'll get into a crisis, which is where all of the combat takes place. There clearly wasn't a large emphasis on this area of the game. In fact, it took me about 12 hours of game time to reach my first post-tutorial crisis situation. Here we have your typical turn-based system. You can spend your turn by both moving and performing an action. The same concept of skill checks apply here, meaning you can choose to spend more of a certain stat to do more damage and to increase your hit percentage. This system is also much easier to understand than the pure D&D style mechanics of Planescape Torment, which took me hours of research to work out what the hell was going on in battle. These crisis situations left a lot to be desired and didn't happen often enough to allow for adequate experimentation with skills and strategy. A big reason for this is that it's possible to talk your way out of most situations and avoid a crisis completely. Certain areas of the combat are also very unbalanced. I mean, it took almost an entire game to get a stronger weapon suited to one particular character. Meanwhile, certain other characters seemed like powerhouses. For me, the combat system was the most disappointing aspect of Tides of Numenera. Exploring this rich, detailed setting and interacting with its many well-scripted characters is a joy and I really loved how the entire world was presented. The graphics work well and while the music doesn't have any catchy tunes, its calm, slow tracks fit the atmosphere perfectly. I realise that this is a title designed to deliver a narrative through loads of text, but I would have liked some NPC face portraits or some more voice acting to really help set the mood. When the Tides of Numenera beta version was released, there were loads of bugs and glitches. Fortunately, a large proportion of these have been addressed, but there were still some issues for me, such as glitched quest objectives. What I mean is, at times a completed quest wouldn't register as completed, and at other times I couldn't continue a quest when I clearly should have been able to. There were also a few other issues like a text box that wouldn't go away and a character who was claimed to be dead by another character before that death actually happened. Talk about spoilers. Still, it wasn't the biggest train wreck I've ever seen. I'm sure they'll patch these issues eventually. To break it down, is Tides of Numenera as good as its cult hit predecessor Planescape Torment? No. Is it worth playing? Yes, assuming that you can read. The entire game is very, very well written and the plot has twists and turns around every corner. Learning about your character and the characters around you is always engaging up until the final conclusion. The strong focus on choice and consequence is a large reason why this journey is so enjoyable. So often was I presented with multiple options that all seemed reasonable. You will do a lot of exploring, uncovering the mysteries of yourself and the world around you. Every location that you visit looks great and is filled with its own unique atmosphere. Aside from a disappointing combat system and glitches around the place, Torment Tides of Numenera is a solid game. It doesn't quite hold the magic of Planescape Torment, but it isn't too far off either. This was Hellfire RPGs, thanks for watching. If you liked this review, hit like and subscribe for more RPG content. I've also just started a Facebook page, so check that out too. See you next time.